Hello everyone, um, physics paper 2, 2020, that's uh, 5054, but hey, this is, it's all beautiful physics. And today I'll be using a stick to point at, you can call me stick man. Let's get to question 1. We'll do section A this time, then look out for section B at another time when I finish solving the whole paper. So question 1. Shows of an engineer's calipers used to measure diameter of a ball bearing. That's our ball bearing. And then this is a ruler. This is yeah the calipers, which is yeah put against the ruler after measuring the diameter of the ball bearing. What is the diameter? All you have to do is read the reading here. When you're counting properly, you will discover that it starts on this mark here and ends on that mark, which is a centimeter apart so it's one centimeter if you, you have to put at least a, a, a small place for you to account for accuracy then number b calculate the volume of the ball bearing the ball bearing is a sphere so the formula for volume of a sphere is this one here so finally my answer comes out as 0.52 uh, cubic centimeters cubic centimeters mass of the ball bearing if the density is 0.05 grams Per cubic centimeter formula for density is this mass is made to be subject multiply these two this is volume that's density your final answer comes out as um 4.22 4.22 and we have our four marks in the first question second question i was almost getting confused with this question because uh, anyway i shouldn't get confused sometimes don't overthink like more and an unknown object from space traveling at high speed in a straight line enters the earth's atmosphere is the speed is the speed figure 2.1 is the speed time graph for the objects from the time of uh, it enters the earth's atmosphere until the second until 50 seconds later until 50 seconds later so we should um, keep in mind so this object was already at high speed therefore there was some force which caused it to end to to be at that high speed apart from that uh, it's not really mentioned much about whether the entrance into the earth's atmosphere is vertically straight towards the earth or at an angle such that if it progresses it won't even touch the ground but it will just move out of the atmosphere again if possible that was the point of my confusion but i guess uh, it wouldn't really make a difference the point is if it enters the atmosphere it's going to slow down because of it's uh, because of air resistance it's going to slow down so the initial speed is at 100 i mean 10,000, and finally there's this constant speed here then finally it kind of stops the time stops moving therefore this after moving at constant speed it stops you have to understand the velocity time graph the gradient will simply mean acceleration so a on the figure 2.1 indicate using a letter c where the object is uniform or has uniform deceleration my answer here was at this point here there's uniform deceleration because the gradient looks straight like it looks uniform b i mean d or a2 d where the object has a non-uniform deceleration my point here is here because that's when it's beginning to slow down then it begins to slow down at a constant rate then here the slowing down is reducing as it gets towards a constant velocity so d was my position here d was my position there number b the mass of the object at t um, at time t is equal to 30 seconds is 5.5 determine the a acceleration of the object uh, initial velocity is 10,000 as in the question there then at t I took my velocity to be about 2,500 as my final I mean 3,000 sorry 3,000 because this is 2 that's 4 so midway here it's approximately 3,000 um, meters per second that's my velocity when time is at 30 or after 30 seconds so i use this calculation here and simply found my acceleration to be negative and um i i convinced myself that's correct because uh, this body was actually uh, still decelerating it was still slowing down at this point it had not yet reached oh let me use this side of the stick it had not yet reached constant velocity it was still decelerating negative 233.3 meters per second squared to a uh, size of the resultant force therefore the force which is the force which is causing the deceleration okay um the unbalanced force okay so my formula comes from newton's third law of motion the mass multiplied by the acceleration the force is going to be 
are 1283.3 newtons i couldn't put the negative here because uh, i am not writing it with with respect to the other force which was causing it to 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 to, to travel at the high speed from space so i've just given the magnitude of the force um uh, because uh, yeah i've just given the magnitude of the force which is 1283.3 newtons Question 3, um, figure 3.1 shows a forklift used to move a wooden box of toys of mass 500 kilograms along a 10 meter horizontal floor. The mass is then allowed to be sliding to, is lowered by sliding it down a smooth plane inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal and 8 meters long. Therefore, this plane is 8 meters long, 6 meters high, inclined at 30 degrees and then this mass of uh, what's his toys has to be moved through uh, 10 meters and the mass is actually or the box is 500 kilograms and the force used to push it is a 2000 newton force uh, determine the work done by the forklift in moving the box of toys through distance of 10 meters work is equal to force times distance in the direction of force therefore distance the force acting on this mass in the direction of force so force is 2000 multiplied by 10 uh, the work done is going to be 20,000 joules 20,000 joules number two loss in gravitational potential energy when the box reaches the point C we look at the C here so for us to know the loss in gravitational potential energy we can just first of all start by knowing that gravitational force I mean gravitational potential energy value okay so that is easy to calculate because you have this height okay so uh, my workout is gravitational potential energy is equals to weight times height mg is weight so this is the same as wh the mass which is 500 multiplied by 10 which is our g gives us 5000 times height gives me 30,000 uh, joules that's the loss in potential energy with respect to gravity b state the energy changes that take place as the box moves from point b to point c gravitational potential energy uh, reduces as kinetic energy increases and eventually ke is transferred into the ground uh, and air if you like you can also include air at sea because in as much as the box will gain velocity before it touches the ground it will still uh, touch the ground with force with a third okay that third into the ground and the displacement of air will still be will, st will still account for the energy that the box is going to transfer from itself to the ground and the air so basically this is how the energy transfer is like as the box slides question c there um, calculate the efficiency of the smooth plane uh, in moving the box from point B to point C. Okay, uh, I will admit I had to just go straight forward and do my calculations in blue, but I realized I'd swapped this because uh, it was giving 133. Then I ended up messing up this space here. Maybe I should have done it on the paper, but my answer is the one in red because I, I messed, I swapped this. Uh, work done by the force is simply work input. Then work done by the ramp is work output. So efficiency is equal to work in, I mean work output over work input okay work output over work input and this is this is where i messed up so the force will still be the weight of the box in both cases because um allow me to move the camera because here you're not pushing up okay so gravity is doing both works weight is doing both works but using different paths one path is six meters the other path is eight meters so coming back to this question here when you do your mathematics here, work output over work input, uh, you divide your answer comes out as 75 percent, 75 percent. To explain how the efficiency would be affected if the smooth plane is meant to be 10 meters long and inclined at 25 degrees, okay? Therefore, if this ramp here, allow me to move, if this ramp, if the angle was to be reduced from this angle, it is reduced this much, then made to be longer. Meaning the box would take long to reach the ground and it will move at a much slower speed because even if the, the ramp is smooth, the fact that it is slanted a little bit gentler, if, if the, the steep is no longer that, I mean the slope is no longer that steep, it means it will move at a much a slower speed. Therefore, efficiency would be reduced. Efficient will be reduced, and this is how I try to explain it. Efficient would reduce because you should write because not cause. I just didn't have space here. Efficient would reduce because distance has been increased through which the downward 
uh, reduced force has to act due to reduction in the angle of inclination. We don't do vectors or components of vectors, but the downward component of the force acting on this bo on this box would be reduced. Um, um, I mean, okay, let me not go that far, but let me just say the downward component of this vector will not have so much effect on pulling it downward because the angle would be reduced. So this is my explanation. Explain it to say to reduce. Um, yeah, it will reduce. We may differ in English, but let's meet in the meaning. Question four. A cyclist observed that the pressure in the rear tire of his bicycle had was low and decided to inflate it using a bicycle pump as shown below there. There is our pump, air, nozzle, yeah, the plunger or piston, yeah. Uh, the air inside the pump is initially at pressure of 80 kilopascal during a straight during a single stroke of the pump. The volume of the air in the in the pump is reduced to from 10 110 to 10 cubic centimeters. If the temperature of the air remains constant, calculate the pressure of the pressure uh, <laughs> calculate the pressure of the compressed air in the pump. I use Boyle's law, whereby initial PV is equals to final PV. Pressure, product of pressure and volume, uh, initially is equals to pr product of pressure and volume. We are, we are simply referring to the constant. Okay, this relationship is constant before and after. So this is pressure after, volume after, pressure before, volume before. When you make pressure after, which is the final pressure that we're looking for, you make P2 our subject and when you do your math your answer comes out as 880 kilopascal remember this is actually 80,000 pascal or pascal so as you do your calculations you should plug it in as 80 remember to include the kilo because you didn't express it as 80,000 if i'd expressed it directly as 80,000 because the kilo means 80 it would have come out as 880,000 pascal so my answer is 880 pascal uh, question B, the compressed air in the pump exists the force on the nozzle. The area, the cross-section area of the nozzle is 1.2 exponential negative 5 meters squared. Calculate the size of the force. Calculate the size of the force in the nozzle. So uh, the size of the force there is, you get it from the, pre, you, from the area, you can see there, pressure is equal to force over area. Make force the subject, then P A multiply pressure times the area. Now I simply make it be the way it's supposed to be. 880,000 Pascal times this much, the force is going to be 10.56 Newtons. 10.56 Newtons. Um, I couldn't express it as 880 kilopascal because the thousand part will not really come out much. Okay, it won't really come. It won't come out. See, the temperature of the air in the pump is increased as its volume decreases. Use the kinetic theory of matter to explain this observation. Um, decrease in volume increases collisions and friction between particles whose kinetic energy has been increased. Thus, increase in temperature is observed. You can pause the movie and read that through again. Question 5. A boiler at the steam electric plant is filled with 450 cubic meters of water at 20. Question 6. A photographer takes a photograph of a flower using a camera. Um, the image forms on the film. On the film. Uh, figure 6.1 shows an incomplete ray diagram showing light rays from the flower uh, through the camera lens of the film. Uh, complete the ray diagram to show how the image is formed. Um, the image of the flower is formed on the film. That is the completion of my ray diagram. The rays have to meet at the same points, but of course they will cross each other differently because they are simply um, crossing the principal, the, 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 the lens here, uh, at, they are approaching the lens, uh, what do you call this line here, I've forgotten. You can research on that one. At, they are approaching the different points, okay? Actually, there are many rays approaching here. There are many rays approaching here. And you find that the central part of the flower will just go past through the lens without being inverted or something. So it comes out like that. And as you can see, rays from the top part go downwards and rays from the bottom part go upwards, meaning the flower is going to be inverted, which is the answer for question two. Set one characteristic of the image formed. It's inverted, it is smaller, uh, it is real, and all that. B. In order to see an object in water, light rays should be reflected into the eyes. 1. Determine the critical angle of the ray of light coming from water into the air, given that the refractive index of the water to air is 1.33. So that's the formula for um, 
the refractive index uh, when the angle of incidence is at its critical magnitude. So sine uh, sin 90 over sine C, meaning the angle of incidence is at its critical magnitude. Sine 90 is 1. Then you cross multiply, you have your 1 there, then over refractive index is 1.11. Then you simply solve for C, which is the angle of incidence, which is our critical angle, uh, giving the answer to 49 degrees. 49 degrees. So number two there, state, na state the name of the effect that occurs when a ray of light hitting the water uh, air boundary at the angle greater than the critical angle. The effect which occurs is total internal reflection. Total internal reflection. Number three, give a practical application of this effect in optic fibers, transmission of data in optic fibers. Question seven, the figure shows the apparatus used by laboratory technician to measure the range of uh, travel of beta particles in air. The source of the beta particles used is strontium 90 with a half life of 20 years. Shows the graph, okay, figure 7.2 shows the graph of the results obtained. So that's our source right there, and that's our our sensor or our detector, which can be a scintillation counter or, gig, or giga counter. That's our graph counts per minute, then distance from the source in centimeters. Give the reason why the lead give the reason why the lead container is used. Lead is dense enough to shield all the three forms of radiation. Okay. I've just made it broad, but it's because it's dense enough to shield all the three forms in as much as it may actually be emitting uh, beta particles. Uh, there's also a gamma which can actually be radiated because each time atoms or nuclei break down energy is released and this release of energy is in the form of gamma so I, I, I give the answer as a broad one a b if the count rate is 2000 counts per minute how long will it take to fall to 500 counts per minute i use the square method or the table method to simply try and reach my my 500 counts per minute but i realized using the half-life okay half-life every after half-life was leading me to a point where it's after the 500th count per minute or before the 500th count per minute therefore i want uh this this the 500 i'm looking for is in between here i want the time in between here so allow me to move the camera down and see how i concluded my issue the other formula which can be used to calculate for half-life or um, and, uh, the, the amount of, of matter remaining or the amount of radioactive substance remaining after a given period of time is this formula where you have this Q here remains the quantity, represents the quantity remaining, original quantity multiplied by the number of half-lives. Okay, the, the half-life to the power N, where N is the number of half-lives. N is equal to period of time given over half-life. Therefore, it represents the number of half-lives. So I had to give my amount remaining here 500 as in the question then 2500 was my original multiplied by half to the power n i'm looking for this n which is the period being looked for in the question the question reads if the count rate is 2500 counts per minute how long will it take to 4 to 500 counts per minute so there we go i have the 500 of the 2500 therefore i make my half to the to be to be the the, the subject then i simply arrive at this point here so i have to look for a power to which this half can be raised for me to have 0 0.2 because dividing this gives me 0 0.2 i did try to look for a range and i found that when n is equal to 2.3 then you're going to have 0 0.2 therefore uh, half to the power 2.3 is 0 0.2 okay a decimal power it doesn't really hurt so um, therefore, when I plug this here, my half-life is 20 years, uh, my n, my number of half-life is 2.3, therefore t is the period that I'm looking for. Therefore, 2.3 times half-life, which is 2.3 times 20 years, as in the question gives me 46 years, okay, 46 years. So it will take 46 years for this count to reduce to 500 counts per minute. C, using the graph find the average distance a beta particle travels in air i had to add all the distances 
these are my distances 10 20 at 30 at 40 okay and then i had to add all of these and divide by them therefore divide by four because there are four points there uh, although you can still uh, estimate somehow but my estimation landed me at 25 centimeters that's the average distance average distance um to estimate the count rate when the source of the beta particles is 30 uh, centimeters from the source the count rate we go to the graph the count rate when the source is at um, 30 centimeters this is 30 centimeters okay this is 1000 2000 1500 is somewhere there don't mind about my stick don't just listen to what i'm saying so 1500 is somewhere there so my estimation was somewhere 1700 uh, 1650 somewhere there okay so i landed or oh, i simply submitted mine to be at 1700 counts per minute when the year i think centimeters d uh, give one industry application of uh, beta particles one industry application of beta particles to gauge the thickness of fumes like plastic paper you know, gauging the thickness of thin uh, sheets of films that's one industrial uh, application uh, question 8 shows an ammeter rheostat and a 6 ohm resistor connected in series with the 12 volt battery the cathode ray oscilloscope is connected in parallel with the 6 ohm resistor as shown the switch is not closed therefore the switch is open so there is current flowing here but not here because of the open switch the switch is just for the cro the real start is adjusted therefore real start is um, an adjustable resistor is adjusted so that it has a resistance of 12 ohms determine the current measured by the ammeter so since they are in series these two are in series therefore their ultimate uh, resistance is going to be 18 source of power or supply is 12 volts therefore current is equals to v over r which is 12 over 18 giving me 0.67 ampere number two potential difference across the 6 ohm resistor it already has its 6 ohm okay and then the current across all of them is the same so you multiply the two is 4.0 volts remember they are sharing the voltage uh, according to their ratio of resistance so if this is four um four volts it means this resistor or the real start at 12 ohms is consuming um eight volts eight volts so my answer here is four number b the resistance of the real start is adjusted until the pd across the six ohm resistor is eight volts what would be the effect of this adjustment on the current through the ammeter uh, current will increase the reading will increase because resistance the over resistance would have reduced remember you just have to add them because they're in series so if this one is reduced so much if this one the voltage here becomes higher it means the resistance on the real start is being reduced okay meaning most of the energy coming from this battery is just acting on this uh, resistor here so when you add the two you have less resistance because the only condition that can make this one have high pd across it is when this one is reduced in terms of its resistance uh, uh, effect so current will, will increase because resistance has uh, reduced resistance of the real start reduces okay that's why current uh, increases i get to question c i move the camera question c uh, i move the paper there uh, see a horizontal line traced across the CRO of the screen. Um, okay, let me just read that again. The horizontal line trace, line in brackets trace, across the center of the screen of the CRO is obtained when the PD across the eight, the 6 ohm resistor is still 8 volts. Okay. Um, the Y gain is set to 2.0 volts per centimeter and the switch is closed what is the effect of closing the switch on the horizontal line trace on the sierra o the fact that the y gain you should understand the the controls of the sierra or y gain in the y axis gain in the vertical displacement therefore set to this much uh here they're not even asking us to calculate for or determine voltage but they're just asking the moment this, the switch is closed it is deflected in the y direction to an amplitude directly proportional to the voltage supplied that would be the effect because 
the the it's actually like here if it's horizontal just like that the moment the switch is closed there'll be this deflection now instead of just remaining horizontal this deflection of up and down because there's some tuning that has been done which causes the wave to be created in that manner number d when the cro was connected to the, a microphone okay the wave shown in the figure was seen on the screen uh, explain what is happening to the volume of the sound uh, the amplitude of the wave represents volume therefore the amplitude here is bigger it's becoming slower smaller 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 so the volume is reducing as the wave is moving to the right the first uh, let me just pause a little bit the first wave to be created is which one okay let me just say we read things from left to right <laughs> so the volume is actually uh, reducing and then uh, pitch of sound the pitch is increasing the pitch is increasing because the the wavelength is becoming shorter okay the frequency is becoming higher so pitch is increasing on that note i end with this first um, first part of this paper which is section a i'll meet you uh, as i'll be looking at section um, uh, section b of the same paper uh, have a good study time